Indeed, uh, we are all uh, thankful that we have witnessed a new day. Uh, this is the uh, blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are, inshallah, going to start this program. Uh, this is the Sira conference that is uh, organized by the uh, Ikna Tarbiya Department. Uh, the theme of the of this uh, uh, would be the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent with a mission. So um, before I, I proceed, I would um, introduce our first speaker. Um, our uh, first speaker is Dr. Shahid Rafiq. He is the Vice President of the Tarbiya Department of ICNA, Islamic Circle of North America. And he's also a member of the National Shura. And of course, by profession, he has been a medical doctor. Uh, I would request Dr. Shahid Rafiq, his, uh, uh, his topic uh, will be what is so unique about the last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Shahid, Dr. Shahid Rafiq, you have uh, about 20 minutes, inshallah. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, huwa alladhi arsal rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al-haqqi li yuzhirahu ala deeni kullihi walau kariha al-mushrikoon, ba'ad a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, fal-lazina amanu bihi wa azzaruhu wa nasaruhu wa attaba'u al-nur al-lazhi unzila ma'ahu, ulaika humu al-muflihoon, بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم انا نحن نزلنا الذكر وانا له لحافظون صدق الله العظيم my respected brothers and sisters today the topic i have what is so unique about the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am going to share with you five points even though there are so many other points that we can highlight, but because of the time constraint, I'm going to focus on five. The first point which I want to highlight, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed entire world events around the messenger, peace be upon him, and the sequence of events that took place to ensure the coming of the messenger, peace be upon him. Everything was put in place for the coming of the seal of the prophets. And starting from the journey of Ibrahim salam towards middle of desert, which has no sign of life. And there was no obvious reason for this journey of Ibrahim salam And he leaves his beloved son and wife in the middle of desert there and raises the walls of place of worship. The first place of worship built for humanity on this planet. My brothers and my sisters, then we see from this very plant planted by Ibrahim alayhi salam, peace be upon him in the family of Ismail salam, after around 3000 years, we see coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very unique time, place, and the pupil placed around Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The timing, the selection of the timing when humanity was lost to its worst status, place of no significance on the map of the world and how beautifully hand-picked best of the souls placed around messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if I start the names of these beautiful souls from Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu to Zayd and Ali and Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, Hazrat Ma'az, Hazrat Bilal, Usman, Umar, Abdurrahman bin Auf. There is army of beautiful souls one after the other. 
and all this did not happen randomly this was plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how he wanted to unfold the events around prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one more beautiful thing we see when we talk about the people placed around him and i'll just give you one touch that how beautifully this whole plan was planned the wives of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know we see his mother was passed away he did not have that internal support of family inside his home allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided him khadija radhiyallahu ta'ala anha who was the biggest support inner support from the house for him for this mission and this message and from the dimension that he was a man and there might be some gap when it comes to understanding of the feelings of the women the issues of the women allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided him wives in the form of aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha who lived around 46 years after the departure of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to teach many sahaba and then we see hazrat hafsa radhiyallahu ta'ala anha the daughter of umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and she lived for 33 years after the departure of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then we see um salama um salama who lived the longest among the wives of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam she lived for more than 50 years after the departure of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we see one of the fruits of the teachings as a mentor of um salama hasan basri rahmatullah alayh so this was all planned by allah subhanahu wa taala that he has covered all dimensions of the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make it example for us until the last breath of humanity on this planet my brothers and my sisters the third point which i want to highlight is mission itself and the way this mission was accomplished dr isra ahmed saab in one of his speeches he says this ayah of quran which i have read in in the beginning هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهر ولا الدين كله ولو كره المشركون this ayah has come in quran three surah surah saf surah tauba surah fat and dr saab says that this is the ayah which allah subhanahu wa taala has granted only to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam This is the unique thing Allah has granted to him out of 124000 more or less messengers of Allah subhanahu wa taala and the way prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has accomplished this mission he started his journey as a single person from the mountain of hira and within short period of 23 years in the field of arafat you know when he was performing hajjatul wida he had about 120000 sahaba present over there my brothers and my sisters the way prophet has accomplished this mission starting the journey as a single man and completing all the way that the whole arab peninsula was under islam no nabi no rasul of Allah subhanahu wa taala was able to accomplish this mission in this way. Hazrat Maulana Manazir Hasan Gilani has highlighted one very important point for you and me to understand. And this point in his book of Sirah he says that the first ten years of the life of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in Mecca as a Rasul. these first 10 years allah subhanahu wa taala has left prophet at the mercy of his enemies and the real help and mercy and nusra of allah subhanahu wa taala has come for prophet after the incident of taif and there was a reason why allah subhanahu wa taala left 10 years prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the mercy of his enemies because he wanted 
you know, for you and me so that we will not put forward an excuse that this work only could be done by prophets or only by the people who are directly guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a human being. So we will not have any excuse. Yes, after we fulfill our promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after we fulfill our responsibility, after we fulfill our role in this path, then the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. And that's what exactly happened after 10 years after the incident of Taif that we see the real true mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started coming towards Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This ayah of Quran, which I want to basically share from Surah Al-Maidah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. You know, this completion of deen, the completion of nema and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was started from Adam alayhi salam, and this deen, and this nema of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was completed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the ayah about which Jews, they said to Hazrat Umar razi Allah ta'ala, no, that if we would have received this ayah, we would have celebrated this ayah. Because this is a glad tiding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now has completed this deen. This is a complete way of life, complete code of life, complete way that, that will cover all dimensions of your life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed his nema. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this deen for you as a guiding principle, as a noor, my brothers and sisters, and this is a very unique. So, so far I have highlighted three points. Number one was, you know, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had designed all the events around Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the place, the time, and the pupil around Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the completion of this deen and the nema of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth point which I would like to highlight here is the ayah from Surah Hijr. Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. My brothers and sisters, I would like you to pay attention to this ayah. First, you know, I was when doing my preparation and when I opened Quran and I was reading this ayah, and I realized that this ayah has come in Surah Hijr. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising that this message is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Quran is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This way of life is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is taking that responsibility that Allah will protect this message, this way of life, this nur. This light, my brothers, and this ayah has come in Surah Hijr. And you know the meaning of Hijr? Hijr is stone. And we all know the phrase, it's written on stone. Everything could be changed, but something which is written on stone. And this is not just randomly happened that this ayah has come in this Surah Hijr. There is, there is a reason for that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to show us the sign that this message is like something written on a stone that nobody can change. And I would like to highlight here two, two things. It's not just the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved. But if we look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the way the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is preserved. To the max that you can see, even we know what happens in his private life, in his bedroom. To that extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he has preserved the life of the Prophet, 
in such a way no nabi's life no rasul's life were preserved my brothers and my sister and this there is a reason for that because this nabi prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this message this guidance this noor is the last message of allah subhanahu wa taala this is the last guidance that allah subhanahu wa taala wanted to provide to humanity until the last human being will come on this planet my brothers and my sisters so this is a promise of allah subhanahu wa taala that he has preserved you know we see the turmoils started from the time after the departure of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know false prophets khawarij mongols who had killed about 40 to 60 million muslims crusaders you know people among our ranks also had tried to hurt this deen so conspiracy from inside and outside but we see the deen of allah subhanahu wa taala comes out always successful and allah subhanahu wa taala has protected this quran there was a study done in germany before the world war and they have collected more than 5000 samples of quran from all around the world to find any discrepancy in quran a single word but they all failed to do that because this is a promise of allah subhanahu wa taala that he is going to preserve the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the message of quran my brothers and that's why this is the promise of allah subhanahu wa taala that he is going to protect and as it is said in one of the sahih hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam every century there will be a mujaddid there will be a revivalist who is going to come and revive refresh this message of quran and the teachings of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we have long list of these names these people from imam ghazali ibn taymiya maulana madudi rahmatullah alay and shah waliullah rahmatullah alay mujaddid sani rahmatullah alay name of people one after the other army of beautiful souls that allah subhanahu wa taala has sent on this earth to to preserve to protect and to refresh and to revive the message of allah subhanahu wa taala my brothers and my sisters i want to say this here that you and me we all have to understand one thing this deen of allah subhanahu wa taala is going to prevail no matter what happens no matter who is trying to damage or destroy this deen this deen is going to prevail the question is what will be my role in the protection of this deen where will i be standing on the on end of the day on the side of my deen or on the other side of the aisle my brothers and my sister that is what you and me we all have to decide that what will be my role and this is the opportunity that allah subhanahu wa taala provides each one of us to help allah's deen and when allah subhanahu wa taala calls ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kunu ansar allah and allah is calling that who are the people they can become the ansar the helper of allah subhanahu wa taala like hazrat isa alay salam asked his hawarin nahnu ansarullah he asked man ansari ila allah and the answer of the people hawarin was nahnu ansarullah so the question is today when the call comes man ansari ila allah are we ready to respond to this call nahnu ansarullah that we are the people we want to become the ansar the friends the helper in the message in the message of uh, allah subhanahu wa taala i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives you and me this tawfiq that we can play our role in in the protection of this deen in propagation of this deen and establishment of deen 
and the mission of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and we all, if we all will be able to play our role, we will be called successful when we will stand in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone by ourselves. Inni zanan tu anni mulaqin hisabia that every soul should know that we will stand. So we will be able to say that day, Ya Allah, I knew the day will come that I will alone stand in front of you. Inni zanan tu anni mulaqin hisabia. That's why I have done my best in dunya to become Ansar of your deen, my brothers and sisters. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on that day, we want to hear this call. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. I close my session with this dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sakallahu khairan uh, Dr. Shahid Rafi bhai um, uh, we will inshallah continue the program uh, our uh, next speaker is Dr. Muzammal Siddiqui uh, before I introduce him uh, it would be uh, worthwhile to uh, ask a few questions I am checking my chat. I don't see any questions so far. But I had uh, you know, one, of, one of my own questions. Um, no, well, you will ask. Uh, uh, Samibai, you can start uh, Dr. Muzammar Siddiqui. Dr. Muzammar Siddiqui is having... And you will ask two questions to him and then rest me and Dr. Uh, Nadvi. Our question will be okay. in the end, inshallah. Yeah, so I'm told that Dr. Muzammar Siddiq is having some audio issues. Okay. And so they're trying to figure it out. Okay. Yeah, so in the interest of time, I thought that... Um, you just go ahead, please. Go ahead. We, we, we can continue on the discussion. So you you were talking about these these five aspects of the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was taking notes. Just like he had this, uh, you said, army of beautiful souls. And we uh, talk about them. Uh, what are the, what are the ways, considering the the time that we live in, the the things, the practical things that we can do, to at least come close to the, the sincerity level. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only brief answer I will have, you know, let's work on our iman. The inner Iman, the inner beauty of our Iman. You know, most of the time, you know, one of the mistakes we all have done as a Ummah, that we have focused on outer beauty of our Iman. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more important beauty is the inner beauty of our Iman. Hmm. That Iman is that you attest words through your tongue, then your heart should give witness and your body should express through actions. And really the more beautiful our Iman will be inside. You know, Allah is the Noor of this dunya, this Kainat, this universe. And if we want of this Noor to enlighten our heart, we have to make sure that our heart is free of filth. Our heart is clean. Our heart is beautiful. Our heart is Qalbun Salim. Then we will be able to benefit from the Noor of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So our problem today is that we have outer beauty, but we are lacking the inner beauty of our Iman. And that is what needed today. And while we are waiting, uh, I would like to remind our uh, viewers that we have um, um, under the banner of Islamic Circle of North America that we have several programs and there are always uh, opportunities to volunteer. So if you are on the website, please uh, and I encourage all of you to volunteer for the projects based on your interest levels. Some people have interest in Dawah, then 
you should volunteer some time uh, and money uh, and resources in uh, in doing that part but inshallah if we volunteer inshallah as dr shahid rafiq mentioned uh, on that day at least we'll have some hujja that we we try to act upon uh, what we heard and the other thing is if um, you don't have time that at least you can uh, be part of this effort that islamic circle of north america is establishing uh, this piece of land by donating because we always need uh, uh, money for these projects inshallah that would be in your hasanat as long as those projects are going on that you will be reaping rewards even after the after the death uh, that we leave this world i think we still have uh, uh, not resolved issues with uh, dr muzammal siddiqui's audio C can i share something in the yes, please. yes please no one thing which i wanted to share here while we are waiting for dr muzammal the way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved you know this deen you might have heard the name michael hart the one who has written yes. the book uh, the most influential people and he had given in his first edition, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, number one, Michael Hart was in London attending one seminar. And he, while he was attending that seminar, the question was raised, why you have given Prophet Muhammad, you know, number one in the rank of 100? Mm. And the way he answered that question, which I wanted to share with you, that how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when Allah has promised that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the zikr of Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has preserved the dignity, the waqar, the muqam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Michael Hart says that there are many hundred people sitting right now in this conference room. I want to ask all of you a question. There are many Christian, there are many Jews sitting right now here. Are there any Muslims sitting? And there were five, six people raised their hand. He said, today, if there is need to sacrifice their own life on the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can ask these five people, every Muslim will say yes if he has to sacrifice his life. You will not find that in any other religion. And that is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has preserved the legacy of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that after 1400 years that we have the love of the Prophet, the respect of the Prophet, the dignity, the muqam of the Prophet in our hearts more than anybody. Same way somebody asked one gentleman a question. Do you still believe in God? Is there a God? The answer of his this person was that I don't know all this science and I don't know all these chemistry and equations and complicated formulas, but I know only one thing. There's 700, 7 billion, 7 billion people of this world could be wrong, including my own parents, my wife, my children. But whatever is said by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cannot be wrong. And he is the one who has taught us that there is a God that you should worship. There is a God that you will be accountable in front of him. And he is the one that you should worship only. You should take you uh, take the chain of all the different other gods, free yourself from the false gods, and give yourself in the slavery of only one god. And because he has said that, so this is our iman that we, regardless of what you know anybody else says, we trust and believe on Prophet more than seven billion people. So this kind of iman really is preserved even today. This is a mercy and the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu laha fizun. That is the fulfillment of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Okay.